Hi class, welcome back. We're still in week four and now we're into lesson 4.2 where we're going to be talking about the challenge to biology design spiral. As we talked about in lesson 4.1 in the biology to design design spiral, we said, okay, we've got these linear design processes out there that many of you are familiar with and there's, there's many different kinds. Um, but you start at one end with either looking at the problem, um, even doing some research at one end, you go through your process and you end up with a, some kind of a solution, product, or design at the other end. And then we talked about how people have made this into cyclic processes, understanding the need for a, a feedback loop and a, a little bit more dynamic um, flow um, to the design process. And some people have gone so far as to do a spiral design process. Um, this is one we said that was for, um, ended up with uh, um, construction. So you see that end of the spiral going that way, recognizing that there's different parts um, of the design process, each one of which is its own cycle. And then also, this is one that um, you may have heard of, that there's a design spiral that, that goes inward. So it starts with a big broad picture and hones in on a solution. And last time we talked about the, the Biomimicry Institute coming up with the biology to design spiral. And here we have the challenge to biology, um, or C2B design spiral. And again, there's spirals because um, as in everything with, with biomimicry and biomimetics, um, things go through um, their own evolution, right? So. There's, there's this uh, kind of graphic you'll see. Um, you'll see a graphic that's a little bit more updated that looks like this. And this is the one that if you explore their materials now, you'll run into that. Um, for our purposes, we'll stick to the little bit older version. Again, I think they're pretty much the same in a process, but I'm more fam familiar with these. And I, I think they're really good for um, as a learning tool. So really, for the remainder of this course, um, as I said earlier, we're going to be focusing on the challenge to biology design spiral. Because as designers, people interested in sustainable design, this is the, the process that you're going to be going through. Recall we said for the biology to design, you start out being inspired by a solution you see in nature. You go through the biology to design spiral to come up with a problem you're going to solve. Um, and then with challenge to um, biology, it's just a reverse. You start out as more, is more typical of design. You start out with a problem to be solved. You go through challenge, which is your challenge. You go to biology to come up with, with your solution. So this is what we're going to be working on for the rest of um, our course. Some examples um, of, of challenge to biology um, um, design process in, in biomimicry is um, this first one you may have heard of, um, there were some engineers at Mercedes-Benz that said, we want to make a bionic car. That was a term they used for it. That's one of the terms that's more common in, in Europe is bionic or biomimetics. They're much more about technicality, you know, becoming, um, developing something with higher performance, uh, more commercially viable, as we said earlier, rather than sustainability. So they went to a team of biologists and they said, find us the most you know, aerodynamic organism out there. And they ended up with this uh, boxfish being that organism. It looks strange, it's so boxy in shape. But if you look at it in profile, it's almost a perfect teardrop shape. This kind of square-ish structure makes it really stable um, in turbulent conditions. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the shape they, they came up with. And they came up with a much higher, um, higher efficiency uh, Form. So you got a lot less drag using this this form. They also went to the looked at the skeletal structure of the the box fish. And they didn't mimic it exactly, like try and copy the structure, but they copied the principle behind the structure, which is in um, uh, organisms with skeletons, you only have structural material or skeletal material where forces. Um, say it's needed and then it, it goes away over evolutionary time where it's not needed. So they used they used that concept to come up with a computer program to generate the frame for this car. And their frame was far more rigid and yet um, far lighter than the frame they've been using before. So that is an idea of having a challenge. We want to make a bionic car with more, higher performance and going to biology for inspiration. 
Another example, you may have heard of this company Qualcomm. They wanted to have a display, a, a digital device display that was had really vibrant colors that could be used even when you're outside. If you've ever tried to work outside with your laptop, you know it can be impossible to see the screen. Well, they wanted to, to solve that problem. That was their challenge. And they went to say, well, how does nature create bright, vibrant colors? And they went to the Morpho butterfly. They discovered structural color. Um, and how to refract and reflect light to create color and maintain the, the brightness, and that's what they did for um, the Mirasol display. Another example of biology, I'm sorry, challenge to biology, was there was a, a group um, that was an architecture group that wanted to build a, a large multifunctional building in Zimbabwe, Africa. Um, again, this is one, these are some really common examples, so maybe you've heard of them before. And, they, uh, they knew one of the biggest challenges there was going to be cooling, keeping this building cool. It's going to be a massive building, two towers with stuff in between. And so they said, well, how, does, how do the locals keep you know, themselves cool? So they, they, they realized in um, that part of Africa, they've got these giant termite mounds that they're really big and they're, they're massive, you know, so they could, they could actually hold a lot of heat. But in fact, they stay at uh, almost uniform temperature inside all the time. And they do so through a series of um, interior tunnels and columns which have openable flaps on the outside and the termites use those tunnels and open and close the flaps to maintain um, they, they kind of leverage the um, the convection of uh, you know hot air rises and cold air sinks to make the whole thing a heating and cooling unit so they designed this building that way so instead of a, a giant HVAC system the whole building works um, by leveraging convective flow. So the whole building is a heating and cooling system. And because of that, this building uses 90% less energy for heating and cooling than other similar buildings of its size. So these are some examples you might find of challenge to biology. So that's what it looks like. Um, that's generally what it is. And remember, so this is more the approach that you're going to be using from here on out is when you have a challenge and you go to nature to look for solutions. And that's what you were doing um, more of um, back in, in week two when you were observing nature as a designer. Okay? So that's just a brief introduction to what Challenge to Biology Spiral is. And we'll be talking about how to use it in the next lesson. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video.